Today, we will learn about Excel for genealogy. I'm your trainer, Lori Coffey. Now we'll move from basics to specifics. I'll show you ideas for spreadsheets to track family data, plus specific Excel tips to improve them along the way. These are a little tricky, but easy once you know how. One of the most important tips when creating an Excel database is to begin with the end in mind. I learned this from the man himself, Stephen Covey. That means think it through before you build the spreadsheet. Let's see the process. As we know, the census, like this one from 1860, is one of the most useful records in genealogy research. Comparing census records over time helps us determine key dates and locations of vital events. Our first genealogy research spreadsheet is to track a family in the census. However, you have decisions to think through when building a census database. Let's see what we need to think about. We know our first step is to enter headers based on what you want, but what do you want and how do you wanna see it? Just because your data comes this way doesn't mean that's how you want it. You get to change it up. In this version, we create only one column for census that we can sort or filter to see what year we're looking for. But we can't see them side by side. Which way do you want it? If you prefer to see several years of census data at once, add more columns for the years. But you'll probably want a better name than a census. <laughs> They'll all be called census. How about the census year? Then fill in the data like their age as it appears in the census. That's a useful chart. Here's another option. Put all their ages on the same row. What do you lose when you do that? The details like location and occupation that are likely different over 10 years. So you have to decide which information do you need to see and store for your purposes. Einstein said, if I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on the solution, I would spend 55 minutes to determine the proper question. So before you start creating your first family database, take the time to ask the question that you want that database to answer. For example, where did my third great grandmother live after the Civil War? How were the pilgrims related? What vitals am I missing for my lineage application? What pilgrim could my ancestor be descended from? What descendants from one ancestor had descendants? These are all questions I have asked for Excel spreadsheets. However you choose to see your census results, you will likely have a lot of duplicate information. <clears throat> duplicate data is no problem. Remember, Excel can handle it, and you can always filter it out. My biggest problem with all those duplicates is all that data entry. That's my least favorite part of building a database. No fear. Excel is here and has a solution. In fact, it has several. I'll show you three. The first is called autocomplete. I've entered Miller in B2. In B3, I need to enter it again. I type M and Miller automatically fills in. For Excel to accept it, I simply hit tab to move the cursor to the right or enter for it to go down. Pretty cool. What's the downside? If you have another name that begins with M like Murray, you'll we'll have to type in two letters before Excel knows which one you want. The more variety in your data within the column, the less effective autocomplete is. Also, a blank cell can keep it from working. But use it when you can, because it's so easy. We just saw autocomplete. This is a second way to automatically fill in data called autofill. This is useful for duplicating several rows in one column by dragging the autofill handle. Most of us never even notice it because it's so tiny. I had one woman argue with me that it doesn't appear on her screen. <laughs> so look again, it's really there, I promise. <laughs> Use the autofill handle with your mouse. Notice how the cursor changes to a crosshair when you hover over the handle? Then just click and drag to where you want the data. It copies it all the way down. It's just a tiny target, that's the downside. Remember how Scotty used a mouse when they traveled back to 1986 in Star Trek The Voyage Home? Computer. <laughs> I love that movie. Okay, maybe you don't remember, but I do. <laughs> the third way to duplicate data is the tried and true copy, then paste. Notice when I right-click and select copy, 
running lights appear around the copied cell. Even after I right click and use my paste option, the copied cell still has the running lights. That means you can paste over and over. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Control V for Velcro to paste on one cell or multiple cells. The running lights might stay on after you're done pasting. To turn them off, that means stop holding the copied data in the clipboard, hit the escape button. Did you notice all the right-click paste options? Let's look at three important choices. The first is the same as the Control-V option, which is simply paste the copied data. The next is values. This is important with formulas. We'll talk more about that later. The last is formatting. This is useful to keep the formatting when you copy a database from somewhere else, especially the column widths. I use that one all the time. Now you can duplicate data using autocomplete, autofill handle, copy then paste with control C to copy and control V for Velcro to paste or right click and choose the type of paste you want. Have you ever wanted to track your family's movements? Where did they live? For example, my third great grandmother, Guni, it looks like Gunhild, but it's Guni, became a very young widow, 28, with three small children when her husband was killed in the Civil War. Where did she go? How did she live? This spreadsheet tracks where everyone in Guni's family lived for each census. For headers, I use location, then year, then each family member by first name. Below, I list their age that year. There's Guni. Sometime in the 20 years after Elmer left for college, she moved in with Hilda. Thank you, 1890 census. Here's a census tally I found that would be useful for the early census that doesn't name all the family members. Ever the teacher, I found a few fixes that would make this a better database. Notice they didn't wrap all the headers or make the columns the same width, which could be confusing. You know how to fix that. Drag with wrap text, right? They also left a blank column, which tells Excel this is the end of the data. Oops, you know how to fix that. Click on the name of the column, then right click and choose cut or delete. And then they formatted the headers to appear at the bottom of the cell. My eye had to look all over the cell to see the starting age. Let me show you how to improve that. Once you select the header row, you have options on Home tab in the Alignment section, where we also found Wrap Text and Indent. You have three align options, bottom, middle, and top align. Pick the one that looks right to you. Another option for your database header is to align the text to take up less space in each row. Let's see our options. First, select which headers you want to format. Then again, in the alignment section, select the format cell alignment drop-down arrow for your choices. If you want to undo the formatting, you can hit undo multiple times, or you can use the format painter. First, click on formatting you like. Click the format painter button, and then click and drag over the formatting to change. This is one of my favorite tools, and I even am talking about it in Word for Genealogy, the new one that's coming out in June. 